Yeah, but look at look at Vici's comp. They don't actually have any kind of reliable engage. Sure, Renekton can look for a flank. He could go for that slice and dice into you. Forge will get to a point where he can jump into you, but of course doesn't have the tankiness to do that early by himself. And, I mean, Braum is Braum. Braum is indeed Braum. Well said. <laughs> well, for Vici, let's remember that they're sitting middle of the pack right now. It was a slow start here with Coma joining the roster. But for E-Star, it's been anything but. 9-1. Top of the leaderboard here for the brand new team in the LPL. And we're going to see if they can continue their run undisturbed against Vici. Or if Vici Gaming have something to say moving into game one. You don't get the Kassadin, but uh, You don't get the Wukong, I should say. But you get the Kassadin here. You know, it's also pretty strange to think that Vici end up with Olaf and Braum which is probably the strongest level one combo in the game, but just because of how having like the cast in on your lineup, having the Renekton when the, en the enemy has things like Rumble, Misfortune set, they actually can't go for an invade. True, so we just got a standard fan here across the rift with a couple of wards down either side. And Fleet Footwork, something we've seen in an ultimately defensive lane here that Forge is going to be taking in game one. Setting up the win conditions for these teams, though. Please. E-Star really, <laughs> kind of typical E-Star, want to look through mid. We already talked about that Trundle and Rumble. They're going to have push in the mid lane. They can look to abuse this Kassadin and Olaf. And when you have set support, it really is all about the skirmish and the fight. Jungle constantly wants to be hovering that lane. So E-Star going back towards the E-Star special. iBoy is not pleased. <laughs> no, no, okay. turn that frown upside <laughs> down, but we'll be spotted out as you mentioned here. But that means Wake can try and attempt a level 2 gank. Smite is available to get in there quick, but E-Star's a walking forward. iBoy has a couple of spears in the side of Shousey as well, so a very good trade. Ooh. And the fact that it can't come back from Wei is well done by Vici. Just big mistake coming out of E-Star bot lane, though. They could have been more patient, especially with Chunda walking down. They hadn't seen Vici on the wave yet. And they got punished. Shows you the confidence of iBoy on this pick as well. Okay, the trade goes right back into this Callista. Now, you were talking about win conditions a moment ago. I don't think we're going to get time because that's a great face breaker. Hung now low. And after what was a great try brush start, has just turned right back. Just kind of evening out in the end. Going back to win conditions mm. on the side of Vici. Tell me. Ooh, they they <laughs> really want to look through their side lanes. Again, if you're the Olaf and you can find either a lane gank onto the Orn or some or a 3v3 skirmish in bot lane, that's where you want to start. Kind of give Forge time to scale his way up. But when it comes to 3v3s and bots on the map, I'm not too confident Vici win that. No, Ike is still nope. coming in meanwhile because there's first blood on the side of E-Stars. They just destroy Hungers. Ike has to flash away. Way's in there as well. Iboy low and Ike's about to die. A horrible start for Vici. E-Star don't even need the 3v3. Just coming out ahead in the 2v2 as Shaosi absolutely deleting Hung. And we already talked about how Trundle wins these early duels against the Olaf. Just as a very strong dueling champion in general, especially with his Q, which gives him bonus AD and cuts some of the AD from the enemy jungler. Plus, people remember that in the past couple of patches, Frozen Domain got buffed as well with the extra attack speed. But you said this well, Eastar's turned it around. Yeah, just Shaosi wow. really Good zoning flash. off zoning off Hung. Wink in such a good position to lay down all that damage. Great flash coming up from Shaosi with that Haymaker. And Wei winning the isolated 1v1 right above the lane. He started able to pick up two easy kills. Ike's first death on a very long time here on this Olaf as Flash burnt while Forge now in a lot of trouble as well. It's a level 4 Cassidy and he can't escape. Wei tanking up the turret, crying oh. a little bit too long. It took a while to kill Forge there, so they do trade back. He start trying to make an aggressive play around the mid lane, do end up coming out with the kill, but a trade kill for Kasten is huge when you're the ones on but the losing Ike, end. He's walking in blindly into the jungle here on top of Wei and Chelsea. There's so much damage here between this 2v2. And that's what it's become now as Forge rejoins the fight. Kill goes over to Wei, but he's just going to stand and take it. And Chelsea now joins as well with Wink. And Forge can't get the kill. This has gone from bad to worse for Vici. Great roam coming out from Shousey, though, knowing he doesn't necessarily need to be in the bot lane right now. Of course, Wink did come too. iBoy is going to be able to get some a CS advantage in the bot lane and get some plate gold, but overall, five kills, 2k gold lead at four minutes. That's right. Very much like Easter to be looking towards bot and then accelerating everywhere else. Two kills on Wave specifically here in the Trundle jungle. 
now I'm very curious if we just see the Warriors outright here from Trundle to start off the first back, or at least the first item. You would expect him to either be on it or be extremely close. Yeah. Well, we'll see, because his finishing is clear towards the top side. Now, CS is even between the junglers, but the two kills skews that quite a bit. While you look towards mid, small CS advantage for Kryon, who picked up a kill on that trade as well, and also has the blasting one to match with Forge. Forge still level five to take note when he gets six. Maybe something else happens, because you talked a lot about the side lane focus here from Vici Gaming. Well, right now, for E-Stars, has been focused towards that mid. You're talking about the abuse before. Yeah, when you have the rumble into the cast, then you just will have constant pressure in the early phases of the game. We saw that he was able to just push him out. Again, the trundle rumble isn't really anything that has hard CC. Yep. If you did, maybe you could have secured that kill earlier, but still, you have pressure, you bring that towards bot side. Shout, we already saw the damage coming out from that Haymaker, so you should always come out ahead in these bot lane skirmishes. It's quite incredible to watch set support because you forget how much damage he has just in his kit alone. We saw a little bit of it there as Hunk walks into the sweet spot, but still poking off this bottom lane. Now that we've had a chance to slow down a little bit, we can take uh, a quick look at the state of the map. Forge now level 6, crying the same. <laughs> Never mind, Hung going to be dodging away from this one, and now here comes the bottom lane jungler again. That's where he lives, way on top of Hung and Eyeboy. Damage comes through, the poke from Wink. A good trade back from Eyeboy, but has to use the heal on the bottom side from Hung or whatever that is. That's exhaust, I'm sorry. TV's very far away. So someone have burnt again. And Ike's looking towards invading Wade's topside jungle. Wasn't able to find anything out of it. But while the game has slowed down, another interesting change to take stock of on 10.6 is TP. TP was six minutes last patch. This patch has changed from, it starts off at seven, scales all the way down to four. Yep. And off of a TP, you get between 30 and 50% movement speed for three seconds. It's like a little bit of home guard returning to TP, which is nice. Yep. It does feel good to move back into lane and make a play off TP now. And it feels like it does kind of encourage you when you're in the bottom, to make TP plays bot, right? And especially for a team like E-Star that have been doing it in the past, that's kind of a bit more fun added into the measure of the summoner spell. But it's also a lot more punishing when you use TP early yourself, right? You're going to have it on a lot higher cooldown, aren't going to be able to react to plays on opposite side of the map. So it's really important if you yourself have to waste TP in the top lane that you yep. can find some kind of advantage and force the other top laner to as well. Because in this game, look, Xiaobai and Cube have both used TP here to get back into lane, so they won't have it up for a, a long time. As a top laner right now, you can really feel the TP change in the early game. So, I think even the in the late game, yeah. right, coming off these TP flanks, True. it being four minutes and having that about 40-50% movement speed running into the fight is massive. It's a huge from a 50% at level 16, I believe you get that. Or level 11. It's level 11. But wait, he loves the bottom lane this game. He's level 6 now, by the way. Shalsi flashes in for the face breaker. Eyeboy has his flash available, uses it better late than never, but in comes the Haymaker again. Way belongs here, and Eyeboy is getting bullied. Eastar just doing a great job at abusing the setup they drafted. We did expect Way, not even just because of who they are as a team, but just because of how the champions ended up. Oh, oh Ike. Ike's really aggressive move to try and find Way, but the equalizer comes down. There is the Ragnarok ready. That's crying, jumping in as well. Forge leaping away, and it really does feel like a rift limp at this point. Forge into the hands of Shalsi again. This set support is big. That was extremely aggressive coming out from the side of Vici. We already talked about that the mid-jungle 2v2 early on in the game is not favored for Vici. And yep. of course, they just got a kill on bot side, making it really easy for Wink and Shaozi to follow up. Forge is 1-3, and three, and he's nowhere near finishing that Rod of Ages here this early in the game. 10 CS behind as well. And all Ikes can do after that play is start the Rift Herald. He's behind two in the jungle. There is a 3k gold lead at 9 minutes in the game, and... If you thought this team E-Star just had a good run of schedule, you're absolutely wrong. They've been consistent like this every single series, and they're showing up here once again in game one. I would have liked to see E-Star be more cognizant of the fact that Vici can make this play. Despite being able to get those turret plates on your misfortune, you don't need to give Vici any avenue of getting back into this game. Them contesting that Herald would have been nice to see. Okay, so it's gonna go down here for the top lane of Vici. Cuban Ikes to push it away. Bit of support here from Wei, who's really accelerated on this trundle. Here comes Call of the Forge God. They're ignoring the Rift Herald as 
The pillar goes there again. It really sucks to be the Olaf here. Without ultimate available, a knock up onto Shao Bai. The flash forward. They want Ike's first, and they'll burn him to a crisp. While Cuban Dominus is too late here. Way runs at him, gets his third kill, and now it's even worse. E-Star just doing just such a good job at punishing Vici all around the map. Forged walk to the bot lane to catch that wave, freeing up crying to come up first, have a numbers advantage, or just come out ahead in this not even skirmish really, it was just a, a counter gank, really. I love Way's pillars. Like Way's pillars are the death of Ikes. Three times he's died because of Way's pillars, and it's so annoying to verse this trundle. You're two levels down as Ikes. And we came into this series talking up his 40 KDA, his undefeated streak on Olaf. And the last series that, you know, Vici had against LNG where he came up massive. It's shown the big jungle difference here between Way and Ikes already in the first 10 minutes. Also does feel great when you get to counter pick jungle and counter pick the enemy mid coming yeah. out ahead in these matchups. We already talked about how Way is not, Way is the type of jungler who picks Jarvan, who picks Elise, who picks Lee Sin. This is his first time on Trundle this split and it looks beautiful. Looks really good. And you see, we thought that Beachy were kind of cornering in a way with the draft, but going onto the Trundle was unexpected from me. And at least now here for E Star, they're utilizing it well. But back on point, because Xiao Bai in this top lane is still defending this turret. This Ord is not letting this one go. Not a boy. It's still standing there at like 10 health, while Cube's still stuck in this lane. The only successful lane of Vici at this point. If you're Vici right now, you're already massively behind 4k gold at 11 minutes. We want to see them trade, give up objectives to what Eastar want to do, look to the opposite side of the map, buy time for this game to go later. Looking at the mini-map though. Because Way has found Ike once again. This Olaf can't get a break. Pillar into the ultimate from Rumble. Way takes him down easy. Cube, all he can do is get the top lane turret. That's better than nothing. But at this point, anything really is for Vici. On to Xiao Bai. Time to call the Forge God. And this, uh, hang on, this Horn, you know, getting pretty spicy. At the same time, you said it's better than nothing. But on the side of Vici, you know Wei will be around bot side where that's where Wink and Shaozi are. So it would have been nice to see Ikes make his way towards top side, hover for this Renekton, give him the safety to push, knowing, hey, E-Star able to punish our bot side. We talked about it. Give up the turret, trade, look to extend this game and get forged to a point where he can start jumping on top of Wink. And we're seeing a point here where how do Vici play without their jungle Ikes in control? Because through Ikes, that's where Vici accumulated their leads in that last series. We talked specifically about Vici versus LNG. And it was in that series where Ikes built early advantage, snowballed the rest of Vici, and they followed. He was the leader. The leader of this pack is so far behind, and it doesn't feel like anyone's stepping up to the plate here in Vici in game one. And it's just really hard with the tools they picked up in Champ Select. I also want to say, despite us saying Vici should look to slow down the game, and them having a cast in, I would still favor the side of E-Star going into mid and late game team fights. You just look at a lot of the champions on the side of Vici, it's very easy for the Orn, the Trundle, and the Set to just kind of peel those away, give Krine a chance to lay down a good equalizer, give Wink a lot of room to play these skirmishes. So it's pretty much going to be Vici running in, Olaf Renekton getting deleted, Forge kind of left in an awkward place, and iBoy feeling like, well, how do I get in range to do damage to the Rumble, the Set? the misfortune. The weakness that we've seen in Callista. Plus you get to that point in the game where you're like, well, wink to one shot me, probably gonna be likely. As iBoy is already a level behind in this game and doesn't have his first item in comparison to Wink. Wink with the Essence Reaver and across the board, look, look at the trundle. Look, Wei has gone to support his team. He may not be on the Jarvan this time around, but still with the Zeke's Convergence, He's helping out. Trundle does have one of the most flexible builds in the game, though. We do see sometimes the Zeke's convergence. Sometimes I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a step back, though. Is Cube really gonna get the solo kill here onto Xiao Bai? Xiao Bai doesn't have the flash available. Call the Forge God almost oh. up. He flashes in front of turret. Now Xiao Bai is just walking out of here. Gets the clap. Oh, that could have changed it. But Cube with a solo kill and finally something for Vici. Well, they lose Eye Boy just moments down the rift, and now Wink and Way are coming. We didn't even see what happened for iBoy to get caught out, but all of E-Star are topside now, and it forces Cube to go for this TP. And he's out. Okay, well he survives, he gets the solo kill, but it ends up being a one for one, as now they're finally through the mid lane with Hung and Ikes. Do they have enough damage on top of Cry, and Ultimate comes down, but yes, they will kill him. Big shutdown onto Ikes. 
Just great job catching out Kryan. Over pushed that mid when Ikes and Hung were there. Kind of stepping away from that. One thing I really like about this series is we've seen a lot of blind pick Cassidans recently in the LPL, but it hasn't been punished properly like it should. E Star coming out huge, forcing a lot of early aggression as we always always expect, and it's not going to let Cassidan get to that point where he really is such a menace. And that's so far away. Look, he's got Rod of Ages, tier in inventory as well, and you're looking at the gold on the left-hand side of your screen. Right there, next to Shalsi, the support of E-Stars, by the way. Also has more gold than Shaobai. Uh, that's the three kills that he got in the early game, and that's the start that Shalsi's had in this lane. On the side of Vici, though, your only hope is Q, but yep. when you're on a Renekton, that's going to fall off pretty hard going into that third item. And we already talked about that E-Star have a lot of tools to peel away these damage threats from Vici. It's not looking really good. Hung and Iron Boy showing us that right now. Rift Herald up, by the way, as Wei comes through, shows his presence in the mid lane. There's Mountain Dragon coming up as well, but E-Stars just want this turret. They're not having to do much to get it. E Star just doing really good at bringing in their pressure from side side lanes and forcing mid. Wade doesn't even have to show on the map right now. Can just force the Herald. And Vici playing back, trying to get some farm onto Cassidy in the bot lane. And now we just need to keep track of where these teams will go with Dragon. Minute up. And Vici towards the bottom side now, getting control while Shaobai getting the shove out. Uh, I boy, fate's call there. But I think he wanted to find something onto Wink, but the rest of E-Stars were waiting. They really just need to find any opening that E-Star can give them, because E-Star can just group up his five, push mid, walk into River as five and control River Vision very easily for this Drake. Vici don't have many options. The only way they can really contest this River is have Q push out a lane and start roaming first. But when Xiaobai has TP advantage, that's not even an avenue they can use looking for this dragon. Right now, all the cards are with E-Star. And we talked heavily about the change in timing for TP as well. Level 11 here for Cube, so uh, I don't do, I didn't do math in high school, but let me tell you something, it's still a bit of a cooldown to wait with. E-Star might have the choke here though. Xiaobai flashes in, ooh, doesn't find the face breaker. And that's something, a key engage, kind of down here for the bottom lane of E-Star. Vici's still hanging around. It's a play that E-Star didn't even really need to make. They could have <laughs> just True. started the dragon, let let Vici walk into them. You do have things like Call of the Forge God, and then you could look for that flash play because, you know, Vici do have a Braum. Send Shaosi in, and it would be it would be very easy from there. But E-Star getting a bit ahead of themselves, wasting that flash from set, but they do still get the dragon. They do, and they set up for the Mountain Rift, the Mountain Soul, coming up next here in five minutes. For a team that has an Orn, a Trundle, and a big set. I mean, nothing could be hurting more for Vici Gaming. Even Shalsi, the support, is threatening off the jungler with the help of Kryon. We'll get that in the end, but catch up time for Vici Gaming while they've got a bit of a loophole to play with. Also, Shalsi going towards the dead man's plate. This is the more standard support build that we've been seeing lately. You don't really go towards the Black Cleaver. You're all about being a frontline being the main engage and relying on that true damage coming out from your W. What else have we got on Summoner's Rift, Mr. Corby? I see the Renekton still sitting on the components for the Black Cleaver. Still, Q's been on those for a while. So whether he has in fact. He has been grouped up with the team as we saw they were posturing for the Dragon, so he hasn't really had an opportunity to look for any farm. His teleport almost up and available as well though, just to be noted, about a minute left approximately, so should have that second item towards the next fight that comes through. Now, all this talk about Vici in the early game and how far they fell behind, to their credit, it hasn't gone over 4,000 gold. So while E-Stars have really just taken and destroyed any chances for Vici in the first 20 minutes, from here on, let's see how this progresses, because to me, Vici have held on by the skin of their teeth. Though to be fair, looking over at E-Star comp, they don't really have this sort of composition that can really just walk under your turret and seat you down. They really need you to walk into them and start this fight. They do still have the Rift Herald though, so... Okay, I guess that's going to accelerate things a little bit, huh? Yep. In a turret, threatened. Way now spotted on a ward. Look where Forge is. Forge has teleport, but he's committing to the top side and he needs to back away while Shabai gets the shove bottom. Everything set up here for E-Stars. Inhibitor turret now going to get charged as well. 
Michi not going to be able to make sure that it stops. And Xiaobai now joining up too. So this Orn now spotted out. He starts hanging around. For E-Star, when you're grouped up as five, Vici just don't have any options. At this point in the game, what Vici need to do is look for some kind of play on side lane where they do have to maybe give up priority for a second in the mid lane, send man advantage down to bot, get a kill with Cube especially, who is the strong member of this team, and then try to find a road back into the game like that. And grouping up as four in the mid lane right now, you can see Vici gaming, just trying to poke their head around this vision. And I guess coming into this series, I was expecting that first game would be a bit of trial and error from Vici Gaming. It would be testing the waters with E-Star, and we'd have a slower kind of tempo game, right? Because E-Stars at the moment, they are the longest game duration team. Their games go the longest out of anyone in the LPL, which is not like FPX at all. You know, we relate them to a team like FPX. And in a way, they are like a, a longer version, right? And I know there's a lot of discussion around that, but for Easter, they find leads, they're controlled, and they slowly close it out. Despite some of the aggressive plays we see from Eastar, I do still feel like they're a very calculated team. They will take things slow. They won't overforce an objective when they need to. Yep. They will just back off, wait for the next neutral to come up, set up vision, and try to look for these team fights. Not like IG that you saw yesterday, that you casted yesterday, which was a very interesting series against OMG. No, this one has a different feeling about it. 5k gold lead's still there. Dragon in a minute, that's the Mountain Salt. So E-Stars have waited around for this to spawn. And it's what we wanted to see out of their composition, like we said, wait for those neutrals to spawn, group up as five in the mid lane, get pressure, and then try to make Vici walk into you, where you can then force that engage. Let's look at items before we get to that engage, though. 45 seconds, note in the top left, while we see Black Cleaver now picked up for the top lane of Vici in Cube, the most fed member, of, as we've called him. 10 stacks now for the Rod of Ages with Forge, but no Seraph's Embrace. While iBoy on Callista doesn't have the second seal item, while you're looking at on the way to third here for E Star. Morello's and Leandri's for the mid laner. Upgraded Orn item starting to come effect for Shalbite. As, oh no, Beachy. This is a flank on the other end of the scale. Crying with a great equalizer. That sends them towards Shalbai. And now, where do you go? Shalbai on two members while. Well, Cube gets separated from the team. Easter are looking to pick away the jungler as now Hun goes back in for a re-engage, but they flash forward. Forge trying to find something in the back line here. Easter now getting flanked by Ike, but it's too late. The damage is way too much to deal with. And they took every single fight, any direction, they don't care. That was also a really interesting coordination coming out from Eastar, where Shaozi did Showstopper the Brahm, so he wasn't able to unbreakable the call of the Forge God. And then they just got right on top of Vici, did find those two kills, and now they're able to take both objectives. Mountain Soul into Baron, yes please. 6k gold lead, that'll go even further up, 23 minutes in. And we've just shown that this early game has made Vici so incredibly worthless in these fights because they can't stand up to E-Star. There's no damage there. E-Star's pulling off. Oh, okay. This is what we talked about with E-Star, though. They aren't a team that's known to overforce. If they feel like there's any chance where they can give it up, they will just back off. But here we saw a good equalizer coming out from Kryon. And like like I talked about, the showstopper yep. on the Brahm setting up that call of the Forge God leaving Ikes in an awkward position, but this is just a mistake by Vici choosing to re-engage onto E-Star. E-Star completely abusing it with Wink able to flash out from that Kalista ultimate with the Braum being thrown into him. They just have so much more damage right now and come out ahead. Plus remember, we haven't had a fight in so long in this game that all those summoners were available for E-Star as well. They haven't had a chance to use them, so Wink flashes away, both summoners burnt, but another kill goes over and he's getting pretty damn close to his third item here on the Misfortune. And on the side of Vici, your composition really doesn't work well when the enemy's running at you. You have Cast and you have Olaf, you have Renekton, so I can see why they thought, hey, we need to look for this engage, but you're you're too far behind. That's not the kind of play you can go for. You need to rely on an E-Star mistake at this point. Especially not when Ix is on the other side of the fight, but Chelsea, okay, X flash backwards. Thought about that one a little bit closer, but E-Stars have the Baron sitting there. They didn't take it last play. They played it epically safe, but now it begins again. 
And it's just like we talked about baiting Luigi into this circumstance. We, we see where Shaozi is on the map. Yeah. Going to be looking for this flank. Xiaobai has the TP. Forge trying to do the same thing. TP channeled in here from Xiaobai. Look, Cube's walking up. He's nowhere near the fight. Xiaozi makes his way over. His equalizer is there as well. Call the Forge God used once again. The Xiaozi re-engages and the TP is late. Whoa. But the AoE finally comes through. And Vici take it all. How did they win that fight? It was Forge who collapsed with the rest of each gaming all but one remain as way stands in the top side looking for his death bell Vici will do the baron we didn't see east are able to layer down their ultimates that they want to bullet time wasn't even used crying looking like he's the equalizer on one member we saw shousey trying to find a flank on two Eye boy, but wasn't able to get it, decides to just jump in, leaving so much room for all of Vici's champions just jump on top of you. What did you say before? Vici tried, thought, oh, we need to make the re-engage. That time they said, we need to jump in. All together now. Feels like it was just mis-execution by E-Star, though, yeah. but Vici coming out way but ahead. Hey, you take that if you're Vici Gaming. Let's watch this one back again, because everything was set up for E-Star. And we see Shousey looking for this flank, crying, laying down the equalizer a bit too early early call of the Forge God hits no one. And now we just see every member of Vici jumping on top of E-Star. Wink not able to ever get off this bullet time, which is what we wanted to see. And Vici come out ahead. I boy in that fight started dancing. He had his tapping shoes on. And he put on a rhythm here for E-Stars around that fight. The Rens go. Feels like it was really set up for him by the yeah. other members of the team though. So many elements in that play to dissect. I love it here. Vici are back in. It's a Mountain Soul, but it's a comp we were talking about where you said, all right, you know, the Kassadin kind of needs to get there. Well, Forge feels like he's there after getting massive shutdown. He picked up a Zonya's Hourglass after that fight as well. This is a three-item blind pick Kassadin that is now set up for success. And a lot of the pressure is going to be on his shoulders when we've talked about that, East, that VG have champions like the Renekton, like the Olaf, that running in at this point in the game, they aren't very tanky. They fell behind, fell pretty far behind, yep. and it will be pretty easy for E-Star to just delete them if this time they are able to lay down those ultimates. Game should be over. Essentially, my thought was, all right, this is the final fight that puts the nail in the coffin of Ichi Gaming. And as they fight back now, I get the start of the series that I really wanted, one that is super competitive. And looking at a Baron buff on Vici going for another minute 10. Now Forge in the side lane, moving his way down. Ike spotted in Ripper. Xiaobai without TP is nowhere near mid. Forge hovering towards mid, knowing that E-Star are looking for this engage. Would be nice to see Vici use two lanes of pressure at this point. It is very hard for Krine to match him in the side lane. Yep. I remember you talking about Cube in the early game especially. Uh, this Croc still with that two and a half item on top of the Ornn with two upgraded items. E-Star's moving mid, hung here, but doesn't jump to Eyeboy. Careful now, they say. Crying gets a slow down with Electro Harpoon. They're burning him down. The Speechy Gaming support has to be Fates called out. While Forge is pushing this, let's go. Tempo says E-Star, we have it. Looking over at the side of E-Star right now, they're, they are just going to look for an aggressive inhibitor, but you're going to be able to even that out on the side of Forge. Yeah, because no one's backing away. E-Stars as a five-man unit are all there, but they've lost vision, so Forge is like, can I get this? Answer is yes. That's the match. And this is also one of the problems with E-Star comp, where, again, you, your only real engage tool is that call of the Forge God, which is countered by the Brahm, so they aren't able to really force their way on top of Vici, which would make Forge have to blow a TP coming back in. The level 16 Cassidy. It's about everything you can take from him right now. Needlessly large rod. There is a blasting one in the inventory as well. And I'm counting his items right now. You can see me smiling, Lyric, because I'm counting his items on the way to four. While on the other side of Easter, I'm looking more at Wink right now. Has the Molten Edge. Three items with the BT. Eastar still posturing aggressively in front of the Elder with a two-man knockup. That could start the fight perfectly. Ikes is the one caught out with Hunk, but they're re-engaging. The ult comes through. They can't get the knockback. It's blocked by oh. Brom, but the wrong side of the wall. Wink gets it with the bullet time. Hung at half health. Just Eastar throwing down a lot of their ultimates, what seems way too early. Not able to chunk down the members of Vici, and their composition is very ult-reliant. 
Oh no. And Vici still have Forge threatening that flank. I've seen this fight before. RNG, EDG in this exact moment, exact space with a Kassadin on the side of RNG. The Forge, he wants to imitate. He's in for the flank. He has the stack up while the back comes through. The Equalizer there. Vici have a numbers advantage. The Orc's not here. This is their fight. But for Easter, can they get it down? No! In comes Eyeboy and Forge. The triple kill already given over. Forge gets the shield, gets the quadra, but gets destroyed before he gets it all. Shall by the last one. And look how annoying it is as the Ord flashes over the wall. It's a four for four, but Eyeboy lives on. Vici doing so good to punish right at the exact moment that Shall by backed. Wink looking like he was playing it so well at first, cutting around the team fight, but this is the danger of Cassidy once he gets on top look of at you. The base. Look at the base of Vici. He needs to go back, though. Minions are just channeling in. Eyeboy's backing away. That's right. The Nexus turret is going to drop. And Xiaobai having to do the same. We do see Super Minions threatening that top side. But here, going into this fight, just Cube coming in. We see Xiaobai already recalled. You're already missing a lot of key ultimates on the side of E-Star. Once Cassidy jumps in, they get the exhaust on the Misfortune. Just very easy for them to delete him, and now E-Star have no consistent DPS with Wink gone. Forge still alive, Eyeboy still alive. Very easy for them to take down the members of E-Star. I love that it was a 4 for 4 trade. You saw Crying in that fight. Why the Rumble is such a big pick for him as well. Very influential with his equalizers, plus the damage as he goes gold. Means you can touch, you can't touch him, but he can touch you, but Elder wasn't taken in that trade, Lyric. We're going back round two. And look where Wink is on the mini-map. He is nowhere oh, where yeah. he can what answer. The? Vici should be able to secure this for free. At 5k, you're right. Wei can't get in. Zoned away. Is Forge now going to do the same with the side of Easter? He jumps in onto Shoutsy. Look at him. With the Haymaker, he'll survive for now. But the Showstopper used defensively. He's dead. And Elder on the side of Vici. They got a 4 versus 5 for 40 seconds. And Eastar completely throwing away their lead. They were the ones... They had Dragon, they all, they still have Dragon Soul. They were completely ahead, and Vici finding an avenue back into this game that they shouldn't have, and Forge coming up huge. Absolutely massive. The IG substitute from 2019 when Rookie had to go back to Korea. He stepped up. Now on Vici Gaming, he's stepping up once again. Baron started way on the back of Pit, but how do you stop this one? On the side of Eastar, it's really going to come down to some kind of dream steal coming out from Wei. My boy here, not in the pit. They need his rent to secure this way. On the other side, wards are there, but they can't get near it. Baron and Elder in hand. The duo buff secured by Vici. Now Vici have so many options with how they could play out this game. It would be nice to see <laughs> your face hey, right now. Ooh. This game was in the bin for Vici. Then one fight determines it all. One fight when things like Baron are still up are, you know, extremely crucial. And you mentioned Forge before. He's now going to Void stuff. Needlessly large rod in hand as well. Forge is bigger than big. But if we have to balance that, look at the side of Easter. When Wei started this game so strong, he's still a big front line, but he's got the Knight's Vow. He's trying to support Wink here with his four items. And also Kryon, who's got three. But Vici with Elder and Baron in hand. It's their story in this game one that has been revitalized. And it's Forge! What the heck? Cassidy jumps in. That's the first jungler gone. And it's on the side of Eastar. Here comes the ultimate here from Kryon. That's great. But Eyeboy has the face call. Do they re-engage? Call the Forge God stops. Forge, funnily enough, as bullet time in front of the turret. I don't think that's enough. Vici have found their pick. Forge is doing so much damage to Trundle on that engage, but we see when Eastar's comp is on the back foot, there isn't really anything it could do to answer this push from Vici. They want to end it here. Forge jumps in again and Crimes just gone. Wink two into the GA. He drops as Forge will go golden at the right time. Chelsea with a great face breaker, but I think it's too late. High boy is ducking and dodging all the wrenches from Eastar's Elder Explosion. And Vici, you are the heroes of game one. You're one step away from killing Eastar's. And we talked about how Eastar are typically.